yesterday a big chunk fell off right up there. Everybody <laughs> else keeps asking to come out, I won't let anybody out. So it's just, just you and Jay so far, the ones I've let out. Hello everybody, welcome back into the Colored Gemstone Academy. My name is Paul DC, I am your instructor, and this is my YouTube channel, Paul DC Gemstones. Now, if you're watching for the first time or if you just haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscribe button. It really does help me out. It's completely free, it costs you nothing, but it helps me continue to do these lessons for you. This week, my lesson is going to be on Kingman Turquoise, one of my favorite mines on planet Earth. And you're gonna get a chance to visit that mine through the magic of the video that we shot. You'll get to hear, uh, learn about, uh, straight right from the horse's mouth, Marty Koba is the leaseholder of the mine, has been for, so for about four generations. Um, so before we get to that, it's largely gonna be just video, but I wanna tell you a little bit about the, the journey first. Most of the times I'm talking to you about getting to a mine, they're in the most unattainable places on Earth whether it was going to Tanzania, where it's, you know, 24, 36 hours to get there. Or same thing when I did talk, talk to you about the amethyst mines in Brazil, it took the better part of a day, day and a half before you even get to the mine. Well, this one is really accessible. You're not going off road for hours and hours to get there. Uh, literally from Las Vegas, it might be an hour and a half drive on regular roads to get to the entrance of the mine or Colba processing as the, the company's called that is running it. Uh, so very, very accessible. But there's still some things that you need to know. So when we were planning this trip with Marty Colba, we planned it around the JCK show in Las Vegas, which is usually in June and it's a summer and it's very, very hot. In the day, it can be 108 to 100 and uh, 15 degrees in Las Vegas and then it drops at night and becomes much, much cooler. Well, that's much the same climate that you're going to get in Golden Valley, Arizona. So Marty uh, told us we had to get there very early because we had to quit the filming by noon because it's just too darn hot. Well, we were very, very lucky. The day that we ended up choosing, although we stayed close to the mine so we can get there early, uh, the weather kind of broke. So it was about 84 87 degrees with lower humidity. We were very, very happy and we got all the filming done. Now, first of all, where is the Kingman Mine? If you take a look on the little map there, you're going to see a place, a little, I, I put a little uh, highlighter on it, and you'll see the city of Kingman, Arizona. Just above that is a place called Golden Valley, and just a little, in kind of a little north of Golden Valley it's, is where the Kingman Mine is. So, easily accessible by car. You saw a little bit of that when we were pulling up in the car at the beginning of this lesson. Um, so it's one of the most accessible mines on planet Earth. Um, but we're going to take you through clip by clip learning about the, the do's and don'ts in the mining business. And the first clip is going to be where we are in the mine. And the, and when they're, and the mining process is like this. You'll see machines and a lot of water moving Earth uh, away from the mountain until you see some color and that's usually what they call a vein and in the first clip I'm going to explain to you what it means to follow the vein. Take a look at this. Any mining operation you're looking for indications where there's going to be more. What we're talking about here is a vein that has been found and we're going to follow that vein and find as much material as we possibly can and you never know what you're going to find and you never know what direction it's going to go it may disappear and then you think that's it and 10 feet later it might pick up again. This is the unpredictable part of the mining business, but <laughs> the results are obviously spectacular. Well, the basic rule of thumb in those mining operations, at least for many, many, many years, is once you found that vein of turquoise, then all of the big machinery stops and you get it with the hand pickaxe and they tell you to take something, anything that's about the size of the palm of your hand in turquoise and put it into one of those five gallon buckets and then you're on your merry way. Well, it's still done that way. But then there was a game changer that happened a number of years ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago, where they discovered they were only getting a fraction of the turquoise that was in that, that mountain. And the piles of earth around mining, they call that tailings. That's the tailings of the mine. So you're going to see a big earth-moving bulldozer picking up 
uh, material, just bunches of earth, put it in the hopper, and they put it on a conveyor belt. And you're going to see it going through that conveyor belt and people picking that out. And actually, they're in a, like a mobile home where the conveyor belt goes through. And Marty told me that they recover 60 to 70% more turquoise that way than they used to do in the olden days when you're just picking up the big pieces. And a lot of that smaller material might be used to make that, uh, that compressed stabilized turquoise that Kingman does, like the purple Mojave or the green Mojave turquoise. So that is a game changer. One of the ways the industry has changed is the way that they can recover more turquoise. This conveyor belt that you're seeing here represents a lot of stuff that 10, 20 years ago was missed. I asked Marty off camera what percentage of, that this contributes, because you saw when we were walking up the mountain, digging and picking up, that, that's all they used to do. Now putting it on a conveyor belt and finding all that was left behind contributes about 60 to 70 percent more turquoise than what they got as little as 10, 15 years ago. And now in this next clip, we're going to learn about the colors of the Kingman turquoise. What you're going to see, and this is kind of a variety of all the uh, some kind of different colors and matrices that you will see in the turquoise that comes from Kingman. But this is going to be an interview that I did with Marty Kolbog and the lease holder of the Kingman turquoise mine. And I asked him, I noticed that the color at the top of the mountain was a little different than the color at the bottom of the mountain. And here's what he had to say. Fault lines have opened up. That's where the turquoise is formed. And you see the fault lines and you follow them down through there. And normally that's where your bigger veins of turquoise are. But we notice it's a much lighter color here. What we saw down below where we were working before, a much deeper almost. Right. Well, the uh, upper layers are normally the red layers. It's the iron layers where, where it's rusted. That's where you find your green and your blue green, your brown matrix, all those materials. As you go deeper, the color of the ground changes more to a gray and a black. And that's where your deep blues with black matrix and iron pyrites come from. And that truly was amazing. The material at the bottom, closer to the core of the copper that comes out of that mountain, a much deeper blue color up at the top of the mountain with that iron a little more of that green turquoise, like the color of my shirt. Uh, so that was a very interesting uh, study that we did with Marty. But I, I talked about matrix, and, if, and sometimes, you know, we talk about Sleeping Beauty that has that robin's egg blue color and hardly any matrix, and then there's others like a spiderweb black that is really expensive material. Well, I asked Marty, where does that matrix come from? And here was his explanation. What happens is you can see like these little nodules, see how fragile they are? Mm -hmm. they, they get stuck together. Now another solution comes through. It can be a black solution, it can be a brown solution, or just pure turquoise. And it'll fill those cracks and crevices and those holes, solidifies again into the stone. That's where you get the darker blue lines around the lighter blue circles to make bird, uh, bird's eye, is from this product. Anytime I visit a mine, I'm always flabbergasted by the amount of money and fuel and equipment costs and labor to get that turquoise out of that mountain. In this next clip, I'm talking to Steve, and his job was to literally move the mountains. And the, what you see is gonna look very, very different a month from now. And this is what Steve had to say. Now you can see how we, we come in here, and we're gonna take this out, and it'll bench back, and we'll take this whole thing out here. And then we'll come up here, and we'll be able to come across here, and little by little, we'll, we'll open this whole mine up. And then when we get done on this side, we'll go right around. So Steve does move mountains indeed. Well, this again, I told you, was probably five or six years ago, maybe even seven, that we visited that mine. Um, and one of the things I love about Marty Kolbaugh and his son Josh, as I said, they're the four, third and fourth generation miners in the Kolbaugh family. Um, they were on the forefront of getting machinery so that they could be one of the only places where you could buy something mined in the USA, polished in the USA, and even gems that were cut in the USA. And here's what Marty Kolbaugh had to say about that. How important is it that we can ha now have stones that are mined in the United States of America, that are polished in the United States of America, that are cut in the United States of America? I mean, 
that's a big deal. Well, that's a big deal. And I'm not really sure how many stones that you could even put in that category that even have the opportunity. One, because of the sourcing and mining. Uh, the other one is the expertise of cutting. So yeah, that's going to be a real, real rare commodity. You know, so true. I, I found Marty to really be a visionary and a forward thinker as far as cutting and polishing stones in the United States of America. And it becomes even more poignant now because the gemstone business has always been heavily reliant on the country of China for cutting and India as well. But Chinese cutters were really where almost all of the stones of the world were cut. Well, in the days of COVID-19 and all of the in interruption of supply and maybe a tense relationship between the United States and China, that mining and cutting stones in the USA is gonna be much, much more important as we go forward. I had one final clip that I wanna show you. It was kind of a fun moment. I was actually talking to Marty inside of cobalt processing and we could see where all the sorting was going on, the polishing, all of that. And I kind of said something about, I'm surprised things don't cost more than they do. Here's what he had to say about it. And, it, and I really thought it was a very, very funny. Still story. much of the process is done by hand. One of the things we haven't talked about overall is how many times a single piece of turquoise might be handled by, I don't know how many people. Well, you know, when you consider how many times it's handled at the mine just to get it out of the ground, then the sorting at the mine itself, transportation here, then we go through the tumbling and the cleaning, the screening, the sorting. Um, I estimate at minimum 500 times each stone is handled uh, and, and by a variety of people. It really is a wonder that these, these aren't five, six, ten times as expensive as we're offering them for. Because when you think about how much time and effort and energy and money went into finding a single piece of turquoise, it's really mind boggling. Well, you know, Paul, this has got to be a labor of love because it's sure not <laughs> how we get rich. Well, that's going to wrap up our lesson on Kingman turquoise, mined right here in the good old U.S. of A. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. It really does help me out, and it is absolutely completely free. If you ever happen to be in the area of Kingman, Arizona, don't be afraid to take a little ride north. It's not that far, and you'll see Colbaugh Processing. And it's one of the few places that, has a, that actually mines gems where you can buy things directly from the mine. Well, that's going to do it for me for this week. I'll see you all next week for the next lesson in the Colored Gemstone Academy. Thank you so much for watching.